Hi again. This uh, video will be an introduction to model adequacy checks uh, through residual analysis. We will uh, go deeper into this topic later in the course, so I'll try to keep this quite short. Uh, it would just be a quick introduction to the topic so that you know something about it before going into softwares and doing analysis where you will find residual analysis as part of, of the software. Okay, uh, <clears throat> so before we can adopt the conclusions from the ANOVA or our model or the results as we have them, we need to check the assumption uh, of an independent and normally distributed error term uh, with const constant variance and expected value equal to zero. The primary tool for this uh, check is to study the residuals from the model or in other words the, the prediction errors from the model and see that these assumptions uh, seem uh, valid and okay before we proceed. Uh, <clears throat> the residual, uh, model residuals or prediction errors, in Swedish they are called residualer eller prediktionsfel. Uh, the residual uh, is calculated by taking the difference between the actual value and the predicted value. That is the actual value minus the predicted value, which is oftentimes difficult to remember which comes first. So actual minus predicted in this case. Uh, the, the model assumptions that we assume uh, uh, for the residuals, uh, they should be normally uh, distributed with an independent of, for example, levels of the design factors, uh, the run order, and the predicted values. <coughs> they should have an expected value equal to zero and constant variance. Uh, and this can be uh, ex uh, expressed more uh, briefly by say, stating NID zero comma sigma squared or normally and independently distributed with mean zero and constant variance. So just to give you a few examples of what you will uh, encounter, we can take and revisit this battery example there where we have this battery life response. And we have the model uh, which uh, may, is made up from the material type, the temperature and the interaction effects. I'll skip the model uh, for now because it's a little bit more uh, tricky when you have three levels for each variable, and uh, one of the variables are also uh, one of the variables is also qualitative. So, <clears throat> but if you go into the software and take a look at the residuals, you will you will get first this plot normally, and normally or the, the residuals normally distributed. And different softwares will give you different options for the residual plots, of course. Uh, I will here show you a few examples for, for of plots um, from the design expert software uh, that we use in the course. <clears throat> but uh, dependent on the type of software you use, you have different options available. Uh, we should also mention this uh, externally studentized residuals, which is um, the default option in, in this software. Um, I will not go into those details about how these are calculated, but basically uh, the residuals are calculated by first excluding this specific observation, refitting the model without the observation, and then calculating the residuals without uh, this uh, specific observation as part of the model. Uh, formulas and things like that you can see either in the software or in the course book of how these things are, are calculated. Uh, if, going back to the, the question about if these um, residuals are normally distributed or not, um, we have one of the residuals or prediction errors that's sort of deviating a bit from this line, uh, but that's not really unusual. You can have one or two um, residuals that sort of deviate. Overall, it, it looks quite okay. We have a decent... Um, adherence to this uh, normal line. Uh, so I, I wouldn't um, be surprised if we if you make a formal test and if this uh, these uh, residuals would um, would be considered to be normally distributed. So this is not uh, an unusual plot of any kind. So moving on, <clears throat> we can check the independence assumption. 
uh, and here we have a plot between the residuals and one of the design factors, the material type. Uh, so what we would like to see here is some sort of even variation or spread of the residuals for between the different levels of the factor. When we here, here we have three levels, material type one, uh, material type one, two, and three. Uh, again, we have this deviating observation that can easily uh, trick our eyes to see that this is a much larger variation for this material type. But well, this is only one observation again uh, that that um, makes th makes this stand out. So uh, we should be a bit careful in in drawing major conclusions when it's only one observation like that. So. Um, this assumption is, is um, seems quite valid anyway, if we uh, if we do not consider how this um, deviating residual is is, um, is fooling our eyes a bit. We might want to go back to the experimental protocol and, and check what happened during this um, specific uh, experimental run and see that this number is. Uh, it's okay and we recorded it correctly and so on. If we, if we cannot find any any strange things about this observation, we keep it in the model and, and then we, we, we just um, accept that th this is sort of a deviation in terms of the prediction error or the residual. You will see that this observation will come back in many of the plots we have. <clears throat> Another, of course, uh, check is to check residuals versus the temperature. Uh, the same here. It, it looks quite okay in terms of variability of the residuals uh, uh, between the different levels. <clears throat> of course, once again, we have this um, uh, deviating um, residual. Uh, <clears throat> and we can check more about the independence by, by checking residuals versus predicted value. <clears throat> Here we want to see that the variability in the residuals or the prediction errors is, is, do not seem does not seem to be affected by the predicted value, or the or the if it's a high predicted value or a low predicted value value is is uh, it's not affecting the precision if you say in the model predictions. So and here it looks okay. Uh, once again, this. Um, deviating residual it turns out here but um, um, it looks okay we go on and check um, predicted value versus actual value uh, this is a, a version of the, of the last plot where we have predicted value here and actual value here and if it would, would be a per perfect prediction of the actual value it would be fall on this line but um, here we want to see again that that the predicted value uh, it's not better, uh, the precision of the model is not better or worse in, in, in different areas of the actual values we have. Um, so we have a majority of the predicted values here and here, and that might fool our eyes to think that's something wrong here, but it seems to be fairly okay in terms of the variability. Once again, this um, specific uh, deviating residual is, is turning out uh, here, but but um, yeah, it looks okay. Uh, finally, we can check uh, also <coughs> residuals versus the run order to see that the uh, prediction errors uh, do not seem to be uh, dependent on when uh, act in the in the, the design uh, the specific run was conducted. So here it looks okay that we have minus and plus uh, the, the um, residuals go, go back and forth between uh, plus and minus <coughs> over the run order um, and we also have again this um, little bit deviating residual but it's not deviating too much but again it, it turns out here as, as something that we notice in this plot at least okay <coughs> so this was a a, quite a brief introduction into residual analysis and uh, model adequacy checks. Uh, more to come later in the course. Uh, and thank you for listening. Bye bye.